my training is complete, I've begun to taper, and I'm ready to take on another World Marathon Major. So it's time to hop on a plane and head east. This is a runner's weekend in Tokyo, Japan. After a 13-hour flight from ORD to NRT, I landed in Japan in the afternoon. But by the time I got through customs and connected with the rest of the group, day had turned into night. And normally, I like to go for a run as soon as I land in a new place. But we were all exhausted and hungry. So after checking into the hotel, we went out to eat. The first place we ate was at Tonchinkan in Shinjuku. The spot was a tiny little tonkatsu restaurant with a long line and picture menus with helpful English translations. We placed our orders and then were seated, an order of events that seems to be pretty common in Tokyo. I had the squid and crab platter. The squid was surprisingly tender, but the real star was the crab croquette. Like a mix between a crab rangoon and a jalapeno popper, served on a bed of shredded cabbage with mayo, rice, and miso soup as the sides. There was a mystery sauce that you could ladle onto your katsu, but I also put it on my cabbage. I only know this sauce as katsu sauce, but it's like a sweet teriyaki with a hint of Worcestershire or fish to it. After dinner, I couldn't keep my eyes open, and after exploring the toilets, I was in bed before 9 p.m. Yo, what's going on everybody? We have made it to Tokyo, Japan, currently in Shinjuku City, going for my first run here in a new country, in a different part of the world. Super excited for it. Today, before we do all our stuff, getting our bits and everything, we try to make a quick trip over to the Imperial Palace. So I was able to run to the Imperial Palace, but there isn't much footage of it. I had used my 360 camera to film most of this run, but somewhere between posting this photo of it on Strava and going to the next event on our itinerary, I lost that camera. Now, I typically lose something of value whenever I travel. In Eugene for the World Championships, I lost a wireless microphone system. In Nuremberg, I left this jacket in the closet when I left the hotel. In Malaga, Spain, one of my shotgun microphones died on me, and in Tokyo, I lost my 360 camera. At least though, I didn't forget to pack underwear, which is something else that has been known to happen to me when I've traveled. The next event on our itinerary was to pick up our bibs. The bus was going to leave from the ASICS house, which was at a different hotel that was just a few blocks away. We got a quick tour and then hopped on the bus for the Tokyo Marathon Expo. We arrived at the Expo on the first day it opened and there were so many people there. You had to do a health and identity check and then there was a separate line to get your bib. The nervous energy in the Expo was palpable and runners' appetites for all things running was insatiable. The whole place reeked of intensity. <music> the 
The expo was two levels, with the main check-in and bib stuff on the top level, along with the giant ASICS booth. So this ASICS booth is pretty awesome. It's got a lot of stuff here, stuff I haven't seen before, at least in terms of some colors. For like Super Blast, some amazing colors of Magic Speed 2. Got a chance to hold the S4, which is an interesting shoe that is a Japan release only, but that is, it looks really nice. But like, man, there's still just so many people everywhere here. Ooh, I'm getting stressed out. So this booth over here is called Running With Color, but I think it's like getting like a professional like colorist or stylist is going to help like suit you up in like the best ASICS colors and, and gear for you. So interesting concept. So it looks like this biggest line here is for people in line to get these like limited edition Tokyo Marathon shirts. They do look pretty awesome. But I'm just not going to wait in the line that long. Oh, okay. ah, man, it's a long line. Yeah. Alright guys, time to try one of these. I don't know what any of these things are. We should try something new. Uh, I don't know what these are. Should we get this color or this color? Uh, I think these are probably juice. I don't know, this bottle looks nice, but I don't know if that's booze. And when I find out. Oh my gosh, look at all this change. Okay, it says lemon on the bottom. I don't think it's booze. Let's give it a try. Cheers. Oh, that's good. It's just lemonade. Fizzy. This is really nice. On a lower level, there was the rest of the expo. For the most part, it was a typical expo, but I couldn't read any of the signs and I didn't recognize any of the brands of gels and nutrition for sale. That's gonna be it from the expo. I did end up getting official Tokyo Marathon sake in a, in a uh, decorative cup. And then I also got a whole bunch of gels. That's pretty much it. Normal, pretty normal overall, pretty normal expo stuff. Now I'm gonna grab another drink from a different vending machine for the bus ride home. All right, so apparently red is hot, blue is cold. I kind of want a coffee. I think that would be coffee. But I'm also just like, I don't know what these are. Let's get this. Should we get this one or this one? These are gonna be teas. That looks nice, that latte. That also looks nice. I gotta, I think, I don't know that these are gonna be coffee, but we're gonna try one of these. Ooh, it's toasty. That's really weird when it comes out toasty. Question is, is it coffee? Oh. Yeah, it's coffee. Not that good. <laughs> it's very weak. It tastes like instant. So we got time for another vending machine drink. I've been eyeing this one. I have no idea what it is, but it's that. So we're gonna do that one.
Um, there were some like sets of things. And my back is very sore too. Yeah. I think that's also just from. Yeah, she's just I don't know what this is even going to be. But my calves are starting to feel less like. I'm like, they'll be fine by Sunday. Uh, yeah, it just was. So they, they filled up like you know, I love that you're videoing this. I don't even know what this is flavor this is. I think it's coffee. You've got a nice hairstyle on your cup. Yeah. It smells like caramel. We don't own any towels. We have just a full I think it's just car hot caramel <laughs> water. <laughs> I don't know if this is coffee. It's sweet. It's very sweet. The bus dropped us off back at the ASICS house, and I'm not sure what time of day it was, but we were hungry. We stopped for soba near the hotel and had our first encounter with a restaurant vending machine. This one didn't have any English on it at all, and the person helping us knew as much English as we knew Japanese. But eventually, somehow, kind of figured out how to mash some buttons, and we all got at least something to eat. The soba I received was really good. And the best way I can describe it is if you have ever made shin ramen at home and didn't put in enough water, it kind of tasted like that. Savory, spicy, and slurpable. The noodles had such great chew to them and the poached egg burst open to create a wonderful sauce when it combined with the spicy seasonings in the bowl. Portion sizes in Japan are not exactly what this American marathoner is used to. So after lunch, I ducked into a kombini and decided to pick up another snack. All right, salmon flakes, spicy kadro, tuna with wasabi soy sauce, tuna mayonnaise. Just triangle seaweed bonito flakes. Oh, this one looks nice. I got one of these, the onigiri. This one is tuna with soy sauce, wasabi soy sauce, and then an egg salad sandwich. It says, uh, I think it's egg salad, it might just be egg. It says two soft sandwiches filled with plenty of egg. Total cost for these was uh, 350 yen, so like, is that like three bucks? Oh, wow. Let's get into the sandwich first. It's like a crustable. Oh, it's very soft. It's like sealed shut. This is good. Mmm. I think these are called onigiri. Is that the right word for this? Anyway, there's instructions on the bottom. You don't just rip this thing open, apparently. Let's see if I can do it right. Oh, okay. This is good. Nice and salty. I should have just bought two of these. This egg sandwich was good, but by the end, like the flavor I kind of got overwhelming. Maybe if I had some chips to go with it, but it kind of got like sweet feeling towards the end and just felt like I didn't want to eat the second one. This I could eat a bunch of. After lunch, we had the afternoon free. So Ashley Mateo and I decided to test our luck with the Tokyo transit system and head from Shinjuku to Shibuya. Oh. 
If you don't read Japanese, the Tokyo transit system is intimidating. There are multiple train lines run by multiple companies. And while the ticket machines can be set to display English, the maps that will tell you which trains you need to take, that's all in Japanese. But the people who work in the stations all seem to know English quite well. And the process, with that crucial assistance, made the trip overall pretty smooth. Guys, we have successfully navigated the subway. And I think we're here. I think this is it. We need to pick a side though. Because like what's up with the like the yellow line? I've been confused by the yellow line. I don't know about that, but there's one that goes straight across here. Yeah, we're going. We're gonna go diagonal, we're gonna go that way. We're gonna do it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited to cross the street. <laughs> I'm so glad you went to do though. <laughs> Other than Abbey Road, Shibuya Crossing is probably the most famous crosswalk in the world. If you've ever seen a movie set in Tokyo, you're probably already familiar with this crossing. The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, and it was also in the movie Lost in Translation. The train station is just as like frenetic as that crossing. Yeah, true. Because we're just like, all right, I think this is the right way, and everyone's like, being I gotta get home. Swept away. Yeah. Dinner on the second night was at Ichiran. There, we encountered yet another ramen ordering machine. This time, however, we were armed with the weapon of experience, and also this machine had English subtitles. We ordered our food and then waited to be seated. And once we did, we found quite possibly the most peculiar of Japanese eating experiences. There are no tables at this restaurant, just rows of seats each separated by a divider, not unlike the study carols I remember from the library in my college days. Also, making noise or even talking is frowned upon in this restaurant. It's a quiet eating experience. Once seated, you hand over your tickets to a person whose face you cannot see, and you are given a cup so you can fill your own water at your own individual water fountain quite a nice thing for dehydrated travelers in town for the marathon. In the booth, there are chopsticks, wet naps, and also these placards, which let you communicate with your faceless server without having to talk. I wished I could put these all on a necklace and walk around Tokyo like that. That kind of thing would probably go over well in this town. When the food comes out, the server bows a deep bow and then lowers the curtain. And then you can indulge in complete solitude. It's like a peep show meets a late night diner. It's food porn at the highest level. The Ichiran was delicious, a clean silky broth that was both filling yet light, and thin straight noodles that went down way too easy. Overall, and I mean this in the most complimentary way, it reminded me of eating Sapporo Ichiban instant ramen with a slice of American cheese melted in it. That night, I couldn't sleep. It was my second night in Tokyo, and based on my experience with time zones in Germany a couple weeks earlier, I expected that night to get a full night of rest and wake up completely adjusted to the new time zone in Japan. But instead, I woke up at 12.30 and stared at the ceiling for an hour before I gave up and decided to try some Japanese pajamas.
After I got dressed, I made myself some hotel room coffee. In the US, I've grown quite accustomed to having little K-cups of coffee in the hotel room. And I like that. But in Japan, convenience coffee is of the instant variety. And in a way, this makes a lot of sense because then each hotel room has a water boiler, which can be used to make cup of noodles or even rice. But the coffee is absolutely terrible. It reminds me of my parents' house. At 3 a.m., I stared at the wall, drinking the terrible coffee, and sat in my Japanese pajamas, waiting for the world to wake up. The sense of loneliness was suddenly immeasurable. Good morning, guys. It is a little bit before 6 a.m. here on a, I think it's Friday in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. I did not get a lot of sleep last night. I fell asleep at like 8 p.m. right after dinner and then woke up at like 12.30. So I guess that's a decent amount of sleep for me, but not a great time to be waking up if I'm trying to adjust to this time zone. But the good news is some more reinforcements are now here. I've been enjoying the people that are already here in Tokyo with me, but we got the Believe in the Run crew showing up today. Actually, they showed up last night. I saw some of them as we were like heading out to dinner. We had to split up because of like timing and stuff, but um, I did get to say hi to them a little bit, but they were pretty much wiped out from all the travel as well. So didn't really get to see them or talk to them that much, but uh, I got to see them now. So it'll be another new day, new adventures. I'm gonna get fired up, excited. Let's go. Good to see you guys. Good morning. Oh, you're wasted. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, well, I, saw you last I know, I know, but like it's, it just feels like it was like a completely different. I had breakfast at the complimentary hotel buffet, which is what I had done every day. It was a mainly Western style breakfast buffet with a couple of very Japanese flourishes. I would typically eat a half plate full of scrambled eggs and a heavy serving of tater tots. The fruit was delicious and hydrating and the granola with yogurt and strawberry sauce was like a lovely ice cream dessert that could never melt. They also had miso soup, rice, and fish for breakfast. And of course, there was a lot of completely unnecessary hearts and cute stuffed animals to decorate the space. There was a coffee machine that could make lattes and cappuccinos, and there was a wide assortment of these delicious little overcomplicated pastries that reminded me of Paris Baguette, a Korean bakery that serves French-style baked goods and is popular in Fort Lee, New Jersey, where my parents live. Overall, I was relieved to have a full belly from this buffet, and I was so happy to see some more familiar faces. All right, guys, yeah. finished breakfast. Yeah. It's chilly out, but we're heading out to a shakeout run. Most of the gang is here. We're gonna meet some new people or other people over in Shinjuku Park. I think that's the rest of the group over there. So welcome, my name is David. Um, I'm the global team captain of the ASICS front runner community. And uh, we'll be uh, leading the shakeout run together with some help from uh, some front runners. So we are here in Tokyo in uh, Shinjuku Central Park. It's time for a shakeout run together with some amazing people from all over the world, yeah?
All right, guys, just finished out the shakeout. We're on with the A6 front runners. We're gonna get a couple more. I don't know about miles, but tack on a little bit. Run back to the hotel. Got a little bit of time before lunch and then the activities of this afternoon. A lot of other people are working and doing all sorts of other stuff, so I'm kind of on my own. I'm gonna head back over to the Godzilla Hotel. I don't think it's actually called the Godzilla Hotel, but that's what I'm calling it. I had footage of it, but it's on that 360 camera that I lost, so I wanna make sure I still have something from that spot. And then uh, I'm gonna try and find a temple. I feel like that would be good for me to do today. that I was looking for. I think I can go over there. It's across the street and it's very easy to cross or it would be but then there's like the whole like jaywalking thing here and no one does that so we'll cross over at the cross off and we'll loop back around. This is a Tenryuji temple and it is set in the middle of a city block. The slammed juxtaposition of history and modernity is striking. In fact, someone's jaguar is parked out front. But for me, the most notable feature of this Buddhist temple is the Bell of Time, an ominous name for what was essentially a town clock. They say it was particularly useful for patrons of the nearby red light district to know when it was time to leave. There is a beautiful cemetery on the temple grounds but I didn't know what the rules were for a visitor like me to be able to walk through. So I stayed back and viewed what I could, taking special note of the offerings to ancestors that seemed to be gifts of tea or drinks from the vending machine. hungry and very cold. That would be delicious right now. It's not open until 11. Got another hour I gotta wait. All right guys, I'm in a claw machine arcade. I'm trying to play one of these for my daughter. She loves this kind of stuff. For photo booths.
unfortunately, no luck at the Claw Machine Arcade. Now I'm gonna head back to the hotel because we've got another adventure coming up and lunch really soon. But before I do that, I do wanna grab a little bit of a snack and then I'll head back to the hotel, clear off some memory cards and charge some batteries. Back in the hotel room, let's try some food. This thing, I don't know. It is likely a dessert. It's got strawberries on it, but I'm also the most scared of it. So I'm gonna eat this one first, so that way it's not leaving a bad taste in my mouth if I don't like it. Ooh, it is spongy, soft, and uh, there's something definitely dense in the middle. Mm. Oh, there's like a strawberry in here. Oh, this is like a rice. Um, you form the rice and like mush it up until it becomes like a dough. And I think there's, I think this is red bean paste around the strawberry. My dad would love this. Ah, chewy. Next we got this. It says karbi. And then I don't know what all these other things. There was a bunch of different colors of it. Karbi in Korean translates to short ribs. I'm pretty sure that's not what this is. And I'm finding that like very little Korean translates or has similar like word roots or sounds in Japanese. So I'm absolutely lost. I feel like this is gonna be like chips. Little sticks inside. Yeah. I think this green, like, you know, usually green with chips is like sour cream and onion. I think this is kind of like an onion flavored potato stick. It's like chips. It's good. I like this. All right. This one is spicy Pollock Row. Let's see if I like this one. I was going to get another mayonnaise tuna, but I feel like I got that yesterday. So let's try something new. Ugh, this one fell apart. All right. That was all right. Starts out just a little bit salty and then ends very salty and very fishy. I'm not sure I like this. At lunchtime, the Believe in the Run crew had to head over to the expo to get their bibs. And those of us who got our bibs the day before got to go to lunch. We headed over to Minato City to a small sushi restaurant called Sushi Ito. As far as I can tell, there's only about 10 seats in the entire restaurant, although there were two sushi chefs and many other kitchen staff working at lunch. We each chose the tasting menu, although I opted for a slightly cheaper option as it promised a greater quantity to quality value proposition. That's just kind of my style. The first course was a Japanese tuna salad served on a bed of microgreens. When the server saw that I was filming the meal, I thought she was going to ask me to put my camera away. But instead, she came over, rotated the dish slightly so that the camera would have a better angle of the plate. Next, I'm not sure if this was eggs or tofu, but either way, it was delicious. There were little vegetables inside of this silky, delicious curd. Next was a quartet of sushi amuse-bouche. I think the top two were yellowtail and salmon. The bottom left one was rather unremarkable. I don't really remember what that was, but the one on the lower right, that was conger eel. This tasted like pickled knuckles. I did not enjoy it. For the main course, I was treated to a large array of sushi and a roll. I worked my way from bottom right to top left, and I'm not entirely sure of what all I ate. But the sushi was delicious with a generous dollop of potent wasabi in between the rice and the fish. The food was satisfying and delicious, and everyone had something on their plates that expanded their culinary horizons just a little bit. 
for dessert, coffee, and a cherry ice. The coffee was not so good, but the cherry ice was delicate and slightly sweet. After lunch, we had some time before we had to meet up with everyone again. So we walked around a bit and we saw our first cherry blossom trees in bloom and then visited the Hiei Shrine. beautiful lunch got to visit a shrine that was amazing now we're going to go to this team lab That night, all the ASICS people gathered at the ASICS house for dinner, and then afterwards, 
we were given our Greg Itahara customized singlets. Riding to the big group run back in the same park we were yesterday. I'm not sure how many people we'll see today, but it should be a good turnout. I came all the way from Long Island to get over here. <laughs> good to see you, my friend. Hi, Lizimus. Ah, okay. <laughs> It's good morning for those of you who don't know. And Ego ga wakare wakaremasu ka? Ego ga wakaremasu ka? Do you understand English? Raise your hand. Yes, all right. We wanted to thank you all for coming out. I'm going to introduce you to some people. This is David from ASICS Front Runners. Woo! Who, who knows this guy? Anybody? This is our star, Kafuzi. And then the Believe in the Run team, we have Robbie. Megan, our fantastic photographer Brandon. If you see him, look good because he'll get you. All right, and then we have Ashley Mateo. Woo! So, thank you to ASICS for putting this together and bringing us all together in Japan. We're going to do a loop around the park. We're going to do several of them, matter of fact. Do as many as you want. We're probably going to do around four to get in a total of three miles or 5k if you like kilometers and we're probably going to split it up because it's a large group. David are you taking one of the groups? Yes I am so uh, yeah we're probably going to split it up in maybe two groups or maybe even more so um, but uh, yeah I will take the lead of one group we have some other front runners as well to be supporting so we'll make this happen right? We're going to do first Kafuzi <laughs> One, two, three. Go for it! Right, next one, A6. One, two, three. A6! Next one, Believe in the Run. It's a little longer, but one, two, three. After the shakeout, we had time to grab a quick bite to eat. And I wanted to try and find a Tsukemen spot in the mall at Shinjuku Station. Problem is, this mall is gigantic and we couldn't read any of the signs. So we did a lot of wandering around and quickly found ourselves short on time. We did our best to communicate with the vendors at this food court, which was a challenge. 
and we came away with food that we generally didn't know what it was. I got a little box of tofu wrapped rice and an egg and rice bowl. got off the bus. It was a very long ride. Long enough that I took a nap. I kind of wish the bus ride was longer. Whoa. <laughs> but now we're going to learn about some indigo dyeing. Traditional Japanese indigo dyeing, or aizome, is an 800-year-old technique. Indigo leaves are fermented and then processed to create a vat of pungent tar-like liquid that they say can cure hay fever. We took white t-shirts, scrunched them up, bound them with rubber bands, and then dipped them into the blue tar. To achieve a deeper indigo, you had to repeatedly dip your product into the barrels. And later, after some time to set and then a quick rinse, we each had our own traditionally dyed indigo shirts. Don't, don't jaywalk. Don't the jaywalk. The... Read the room. There's Follow the customs. Miles. Follow the customs. Oh. See, it wasn't that long of a wait. It was <laughs> For dinner on the night before the marathon, we went to Serinkan in Meguro City. The restaurant was tiny but tall. It was three stories high, but each story seemed to be about the size of a large American suburban living room. The spiral staircase was quaint yet sketchy, which seems to be quite common in restaurants. Another one of Japan's many cultural dichotomies. Tokyo prides itself on its earthquake preparedness, but every place I'd been to seemed like it was just a drunken stumble away from it all coming crashing down. The restaurant was not only pizza themed, but it was also Beatles themed. So Beatles paraphernalia adorned the walls and a seemingly random assortment of Beatles songs wafted to our ears. Because it was the night before the marathon, and because I had finally figured out that a regular sized meal in Tokyo wasn't going to fill me up, I ordered two dinners a pizza, and a pasta. And this was a good decision. And with my belly full, I was ready for bed. The next morning was the marathon, and I've already made my Tokyo Marathon 2023 video. So I won't repeat that footage here, but I will take this opportunity to talk about the singlet. ASICS already makes one of my favorite singlets, and they commissioned Greg Itahara to customize them for the members of the North American media team. Coincidentally, Greg and I have been working together on running designs for years now. Greg has not only customized several pairs of shoes for me, but he is the one who designed the Kofuzi Run Club Dragon in the first place. For this Tokyo Marathon singlet, he took the design even further, incorporating water and clouds to represent the Chicago lakefront. And there are three clouds, as three is a lucky number in Japan. The pattern on the back is Yagasuri, a traditional pattern known as arrow feathers. And surrounding the word kofuzi is a mizuhiki, a Japanese art form of knot tying, typically used to decorate envelopes that are given as gifts during the holidays. From a technical perspective, the singlet performs at the highest level. And from an artistic perspective, it's absolutely immaculate. Thank you to ASICS and my friend, Greg. The plan post-race was for ASICS staff to find the media team and usher them to the ASICS after party near the finish line. There is an ASICS run shop that has showers and shoe rentals, and next door is an Irish pub. In the locker room, 
The showers were nice, but tiny in a Japanese way, and the bathrooms were elaborate with the toilets and also tiny. I got myself cleaned up and then headed over to celebrate with the rest of the ASICs people. I couldn't find anyone from the North America media group, but I was happy to find Alex Flatiti and his team. Soon, my friends started arriving, but there wasn't a lot of room for them in the pub, so we all headed back to the hotel. The festivities continued back at the ASICs house. There was sushi and french fries, and also little ASICs cakes. I know I've mentioned this elsewhere, but I generally don't like to film at night when people are celebrating. So I will leave this section of the video by saying, we had a lot of fun that night. And even I made it out to one location change before heading to bed. guys just got out of the store called strawberry fetish I'm gonna have some strawberry and grape candy Strawberries are really fresh. Such great strawberry flavor. And then they're in like a crunchy sugar, like a glass coating. It's good. All right now, let's try one of these grapes. Mm. Really juicy, really refreshing. Look at this. Guys, we are in Shibuya here with Thomas, Megan, and Brandon. We're gonna do some toy shopping. You wanna see the hall? Yeah, I'd love it. Alright. Nice. Ooh. Two mystery boxes. Cool. And then two. Oh, cool. So nothing for the boys then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of these. For lunch, we hit up Ichiran. The same silent eating experience, but a new location. This was my second time eating like this now, and I think I've got the ordering machine figured out.
after lunch, it was time for some shopping. Don't jaywalk, don't jaywalk, don't jaywalk. Oh, so there we go. Almost time. By the hotel, there was a tiny bar on the second floor called Bar BNF. It was a Japanese take on the Irish pub. And it made me feel like I was sitting in a holodeck. I asked for a Japanese whiskey suggestion, and they brought me a Miyagikyo single malt served with a giant jewel of an ice cube. It's exactly the kind of whiskey that I like. Slightly smoky, a hint of caramel, clean. For dinner, we found a sailboat-themed sushi restaurant where you could smoke cigarettes inside, which is perhaps the most confusing Japanese cultural dichotomy. The culture here reveres considerateness. Most places you go are quiet. Masks are worn for the consideration of others, even outdoors. And I didn't see a single person walking down the street while talking on their phone or FaceTiming. Anything that might possibly interfere with another person's sense of smell, sight, or sound is an activity that's avoided. And yet, something as pernicious as cigarette smoke is considered pretty normal. It's not at every restaurant, but it's usually at any restaurant that's serving a lot of beer. After dinner, Robbie and I were the only ones with any energy left, and we decided to find some karaoke. With it being just the two of us, though, I didn't think that we could get a private karaoke room, which is how I believe karaoke is typically experienced in Japan. So instead, we found a place that had karaoke in the more American, make everyone in the bar listen to you kind of setup. At first, it was just Robbie and me in this small bar. But soon, some locals came in, and the songs would then start alternating between American songs and Japanese ones. But this group of locals was drinking hard. Maybe they were celebrating something, or maybe this is just a regular Tuesday for them. But we eventually became friends, and Robbie soon found himself singing a karaoke duet in Tokyo, Japan. The last thing we did before we had to leave was visit the National Garden. It's yet another one of those Japanese dichotomies. Just a 20 minute walk away from our hotel in some of the busiest places I've ever been, it's a beautifully manicured oasis. Running isn't allowed, and like most of Tokyo, there isn't a garbage can anywhere to be found. Much of Tokyo is single serve and wrapped in layers of plastic. But whenever you do create trash, you have to find a way to carry it with you until you get home. 
I'm guessing that is why most people don't eat or drink while they're walking anywhere. There is a peacefulness to this place, and it looks exactly like what you'd think a Japanese garden would look like. It's familiar to a fault, like a distant memory, and there's a sleepy timelessness to it all, as if I'm in a waking dream. After a week in Japan, I still have no grasp of the language. I'm not even adjusted to the time zone. But what once felt like a barrage of culture shock was starting to feel a bit less disorienting. The speed with which language flew by my ears seemed to be slowing down to the point where I'm at least recognizing sound. Uh, this one? A large, big one. And I found myself looking at my phone less and less for navigation. I was finally starting to see Japan, not as a gawking tourist, but through normal human eyes. And this place, for all its dichotomies, is beautiful. Yo, what's going on?